Hi, this episode is brought to you by Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your duh door. <laughs> to your duh door. Yeah. <laughs> right to your duh door. Uh, head to factormeals.com slash pretendprob50 and use code pretendprob50. 50 to get 50% off. That's code pretendprob50 at factormeals.com slash pretendprob50 to get 50% off. Yeah. If there's pre-prepared, there's a da door. <laughs> Here's the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Pretend Problems podcast. I'm Kelsey I'm Cook. Chad. Yeah, oh, sorry. I jumped it. Wow. I'm Chad Daniels and she's Kelsey Cook. I interrupted her. Real poor really, double Dutch energy. Really went for it. I'm the kind of guy that just runs into people. <laughs> I go, no, go ahead. And then I start to go anyways. It would have been nice to know that before I started a podcast with you. Yeah, sure it would have. (laughs) Hey, guess what? I found out about you today. What? So we went to the Minnesota Wild game. Yeah. And by the way, I know this is not a sports podcast, but 17 goals. 17? I mean... That's unbelievable. Is that a record? It's not a record, but it's unbelievable. 10 to 7, Minnesota Wild won. They were down five to two at one point, came back tied. It was just an amazing game. Yeah. But a real incredible part is that you have recently, you haven't been able to eat yeast. Yeah. In a very long time. Or anything fermented. So like anything no, fermented. no beer, sure. anything like that. And so today you looked at me and you go, I want a beer. <laughs> and then I was like, Haha, that's funny. And then you went for it. Yeah. You legit went for it. Um, and you called a hazy IPA. I thought you'd dip your toe in. Can I get a Miller Lite or something like that? Mm-mm. And uh, whew. I can't involve back in and <laughs> regretted it immediately. So anyways, <laughs> to let everyone know how it ended, she has a rash right here that no, you can't see. Her face is flush. And um, she uh, is vomity. Is that a word? Vomity? Vomity. Yeah. I, I haven't puked, but I fe- I, I think most people say pukey. Pukey. But oh, I like wow. the, I like the remix. I'm from the old school. I <laughs> get my candles at a shoppy <laughs> and I say vomity. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you caught the eye roll. Go ahead and rewind it. Uh, the short version of why I couldn't have those things and maybe still can't. I'm, I'm just trying to test it out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how violent tonight had, is. You've had bagels. And they've the been last week, great. Yeah. Everything's been great. Yeah. I, uh, when I was getting out of college, I went and got my hair cut and the salon was doing like free facial waxing. And, you know, I was young. I was just like, okay, sure. And this lady who had no fucking business touching people's faces. None. Smeared a bunch of wax on my face, ripped the hair off my face. And then with like dirty hands, I mean, she was just running around touching a bunch of shit rubbed oil into my skin and then i got cystic acne all over my face like my skin got infected basically she was also working next door to jimmy john's running back and forth <laughs> yeah just a lot of mayo oil vinegar so situation. instead of putting the paper back on she put meat <laughs> she put smoked turkey on all of the facial spots and that fucked you up for a while really fucked me up and doctors put me on antibiotics for my skin. But, I mean, you're supposed to be on antibiotics for a pretty short amount of time. I know for an STD, it normally it runs its course in five days. Wow, do you know that? A lot of dirty friends. Oh. A lot of dirty friends. I'm not going to shake your friend's hands anymore. Yeah, good for you. Thank you. I'll just, you know what I'll do? I'll sneeze when you meet one that has had an STD <laughs> that I know about. Okay. <laughs> and just say... He's at chlamydia. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> so anyway, I uh, I was on antibiotics and they just kept me on them for a very, very long time. I ended up being on them for like years, like three years, which is, again, the, maybe a, a month is max what you should do. But every time I try to get off, my skin would get bad again. Anyway, they let me stay on them for so long that it killed all of the good bacteria in my stomach and uh, when I tried to finally get off them, my body went crazy. And uh, I saw a doctor at the time who was like, yep, you have like this overgrowth in your body now of bad bacteria and you have to stop eating the things that feed it. So it's called like a, it's called a candida cleanse. So no bread, no cheese, no beer, no wine, no mushrooms. 
And um, that has been the last 10 years of my life that I have eaten like that. Because anytime I would try to bring those things back, it would get bad again. <clears throat> and uh, Yeah, we went on a date mm -hmm. to kind of a fancy restaurant <laughs> where they bring you courses. <laughs> and you call ahead and you go, yeah. here are the allergies. But when people hear what you can't eat, they're like, this, fuck, this can't be right. Yeah. This person doesn't mm -hmm. eat anything. Yeah. So then you got brought a bunch of shit and you were pretty... I had tears in my eyes at one point. Yeah, because they kept bringing you stuff. You're like, I can't have that. They're like, well, this is a reduction champagne. And you're like, well, I can't have champagne. It has sulfites. Yeah. And so eventually you were like, I don't think I'm going to eat anything. I just feel so bad because your friend made the reservation. Yeah. What his STD status is, we don't know. Uh, he's but one of the say. He's one of the good ones. He's a good one, but <laughs> he made this reservation at this fancy place, and it's supposed to be this fun date night. And I'm sitting there having to like turn away all these things because I don't know. They're like giving me some ingredients of what's in there, but if you have a bunch of food allergies, like this is outside of the candida stuff. If you have food allergies. It's like a fucking dangerous thing to go to a place where yeah. you don't have a menu. And they're just like, here's this fancy thing. And you're like, I don't know what's in here, man. Right. And so they kept like putting things down. And I'd have to take it away. And I just, I was A, terrified and B, felt really bad yeah. that I couldn't just be this fun, right. chill day. Now, normally when we go to a restaurant, it's, you know, you have to ask some questions and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten past that. The first time we went out to eat, I was ready to leave. But the but now... No, we're, you say this in your act. Were you actually... It just wasn't... It was very strange to me. I'm like, I don't... That's a lot of questions. Because <laughs> I had ordered immediately. And then you're like, so let me ask you this. But I don't care anymore. Because I'm, I'm used to it. And I, now yeah. I get it. Um, so sometimes when we go out to eat, it's like that. Mm -hmm. But this time when we went out to... That's... This last time, it was a dream come true for me because you're like, I don't know if I can eat this. I was like, I fucking know I can eat it. Yeah. <laughs> and then so I got two of everything. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was kind was of awesome. Yeah. I, I saw a functional doctor recently. I've started seeing one and she did like blood test and like stool sample and all this stuff. And the things they can find out are incredible. And so she's the one who's been telling me like, why don't you try incorporating these things again and just see because yeah. it's been so long since you had that happen, that maybe your body's okay now. So anyway. So anyway, she had her first beer in 10 years. Yeah. And about a quarter of the way in, I looked over and I go, you buzzed up? And she <laughs> just goes, yeah. <laughs> it was fantastic. Yeah, I forgot. How, IPAs are not easy to drink. I used to drink those so, I don't know, e easily, I thought. But now it was like, I told you, it felt like I was eating a bouquet of flowers or yeah. like a whole loaf of bread. It was just... A lot. Yeah. And so then when I catch a buzz, here's what happens. I'm talking about the game. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I can't believe they did that shit. It's dump and chase with zero chase. And you got to get outside the this and that. And then you're like, oh, karaoke. <laughs> they start playing karaoke during one of the breaks. And so she got all excited about that. <laughs> so that's kind of how we watch sports. Although I will say um, there were a couple times where I go, do you know what's going on? And you go, yeah. And I don't really believe you. But I did. You knew everything that was going on. Yes. Every single thing with how Chad many people thought were he had to box? mansplain. Not true. That's not hockey fair. to me. That's not fair. But I went to a bunch of games with you last season. I have picked up on what's going on. I know what's going on. You've already explained them to me. Okay. I don't know that you knew all of it, but that's okay. You can't just hit the puck in the back of the ring because that's delay of the game. And when there are people in the penalty box, then you know it's like five on three for however long they're in the penalty box. Okay, that part's right. Yeah. Good job. What about the delay a game is wrong? So then we tell uh, me what's wrong with it. Well, it's you can't hit the puck outside over the glass or into the pen, or into the box into the player's box. That's what I mean. Oh, you said back of the rink. I don't know. Well, like means. you can't like clear it out without like any purpose of like that it's going down to somebody. That's icing. Oh, okay. Damn it. <laughs> uh oh. Anyways, I think you're getting great. We watch football. You know a yeah. lot about football. Um, you're learning, you know, that the, um, the placeholder, when they kick the field goals, mm -hmm. you know, the guy that holds the ball, he yeah. used to be a good quarterback in college mm -hmm. and then there's, there's not enough places for him. So he has to do that. So oh. we've learned a lot of things, Yeah. but we watched the Super Bowl together mm -hmm. or as you enjoyed the halftime show, Yes. you like that the best, I think. Or sure. And then, uh. Something happened where I thought it was very interesting. So they showed who had made the Hall of Fame. Now, normally, 
Um, I don't think about our age difference. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I guess I don't. Really. Yeah. Um, but we were watching this game and you said, they, so they showed a graphic, first of all, of who had been, uh, who had been inducted into the Hall of Fame mm-hmm. this last year. And then you said, Brock Purdy's 24? Oh my God, I feel so old. <laughs> That's what you said. Mm-hmm. And um, my son's 24, first of all, so I feel pretty old. But then also, <laughs> I saw some of the people that had been elected into the Hall of Fame or inducted into the Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. I saw them come into the league from college. <laughs> So when you said Brock Purdy, he's 24, I feel old. I was like, motherfucker. I remember Devin Hester returning kicks in college, and now he's in the Hall of Fame, for Christ's sake. It's wild. Because I used to think, here's how it used to go for me. Maybe I've said this before, but, you know, when you start off watching sports, you go, when you're a little kid, you Mm -hmm. go, oh, my God, these college athletes are grown people. Yeah. Then you get to college, you're like, oh, I'm one of them. But the NFL players, they're old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you go, uh, oh shit, you get to that age and you're like, I'm as old as these guys. And you're yeah. like, Jesus Christ, these young kids playing NFL? Yeah. And then the coach. And then you realize the coach <laughs> is younger than you and you go, you see some old lady in an owner's box. Hey, own the team still. You're like, thank God for you, bitch, because <laughs> otherwise I'd be the oldest person involved in football. We're just watching. <laughs> I know, it's weird. It sucks. Yeah, it does suck. Um, should we plug our tour dates real quick? Let's please do that. Okay. So I'm off this weekend. But Chad's in Texas. Yes. I uh, go to Houston on the uh, tw- uh, Thursday, 22nd. Then 23rd and 24th, I'm in Dallas, March 2nd, of course. We all know that I've said it 100 times. St. Paul. Uh, the first show sold out. Second show has just a few tickets left. Yeah. And then I go to uh, Kansas City, 2021 of March, 22, 23. I'm in Omaha. Then uh, April 11th, I'm in Brooklyn. April 12th, I'm in Boston at the Wilbur Kid. I'm at the fucking Wilbur Kid. <laughs> and then... Um, uh, at the end of April, I'm in Milwaukee, and then I have Nashville and Cincinnati and Austin, Texas, and Springfield, Missouri, and uh, Detroit, and so many more. ChadDaniels.com. Wow. You threw me off when you said 2021 of March, because it sounds like the oh, year. Oh, sure. Yeah. No, I'm not taking a time machine back. <laughs> uh, next weekend, I'm going to be at Cobb's comedy club in san francisco march 1st and 2nd and then i'm going to be in rosemont and chicago and then minneapolis here at home in acme at the end of march and then i shoot my special april 6th in madison wisconsin there are two nights of shows before i shoot the special if you want to come to one of those as well and then uh sacramento salt lake city vegas kansas city baltimore denver uh you can go to kelseycook.com and get tornado tickets I'm impressed that we have our dates memorized. That's nice. Yeah, that's real good. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, something exciting happened yesterday. I convinced Chad to start watching the new season of Love is Blind with me, which he agreed to begrudgingly, and then I knew this would happen. Then the first episode ended, and he goes, oh, we got to watch the second episode. I was like, yes, I fucking knew it. I knew I'd get you. so... It has nothing to do with the people on the show. It has nothing to do with uh, mm-hmm, really mm-hmm. anything, but the editors should get a fucking medal. And I know they get awards. It's like, but it's, they show the editors awards in the credits, which yeah, is ridiculous yeah. for this kind of shit. They should have them come up yeah. and they should say, here's why we thought we should have done this. Here's why we made Matthew look like a dildo. Uh huh. Here's why, you know, all this stuff. So it is really intriguing the way they edit it. Yeah. And there are some big personalities. And then are, there are some people that are talking to the big personalities. Mm-hmm. And we haven't even seen them on a date yet. I know. Well, so they must suck. They must be like, <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's interesting because they, everybody says online that even when you finish the season, there are couples who fully like get engaged and married and they never make it to the footage like it it never actually airs it must just be boring or not intriguing because the the things we are watching is like holy shit yeah you are looking into a petri dish yeah of humanity yeah 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 it is really interesting yeah it's uh i i knew that there would be some characters that you immediately were like i cannot stand this just you know guys and girls are both like like this and like um i just like yeah, and you want to share the thing that, that made shit. you laugh out loud that one of the girls said about oh, her daughter 
She goes, uh, yeah. She goes, so I have a daughter and her name is Autumn after the season. It's like, <laughs> Autumn, like the season. Like the season. It's like, yeah, no shit. What else? What fuck? What else is Autumn? Yeah. I just, I just didn't get it. Yeah. Um, but I like the season and that one made me laugh. But it is interesting because you have this one dude who comes in and super macho tall athletic good looking dude you know thinks he's going to own the room and then he kind of gets shut down by one of these these girls who's talking to somebody else and he has to really focus he is crying to other men yeah. and i'm not judging him for i'm just saying i'm not like shitting on him for that i'm saying like you walk in with hey look at me everybody and then you get your teeth kicked in yeah. I, I got to tell you, I, I like it a little bit. I like watching other people suffer a little bit, and but only to figure out how to right the ship. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you have not watched Love is Blind or just don't know anything about the concept, people go on dates with and a wall. Blind. <laughs> people who are, have perfect vision go on dates with a wall between them and just get to know each other through talking they don't get to see each other and then people get engaged on the show without seeing each other and they don't get to see each other until somebody says yes i i want to marry you right and then there's a big reveal and they get to like actually get down on one knee and give the person the ring and then they have four weeks until the wedding it's fucking insane but people do leave this show married and like are still married and these are all people yeah Within the age limit of they were born when the internet existed. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's why it's so intriguing. Yeah. Because these people are like, they're talking to the, the person on the other side of the wall and they're saying, I love you. And they've never spent any physical time. Yeah. It's just someone's finally fucking listening to me. Yeah. And someone's getting to know the actual me. They're not going online and checking my Instagram to see how many abs I had in you know, two years ago. Yeah. It's, it's crazy because, you know, there's this is another age thing, but that's how I grew up for the first part of my life. Yeah. Is you had to sit and actually talk to someone. Yeah. And there, you, hey, you want to see a picture of me? Mom, can you get the photo album? It was that shit. It wasn't yeah. like, look at my phone. Like. Yeah. So this is very intriguing to me that, that people are blown away that you can sit and just talk to someone and quickly fall in love. You're still flush from your beer, by the way. I can feel it. My face is on fire. I feel like I'm going to throw up everywhere. It's a horrible feeling. That was a terrible mistake. Um, (laughs) But I'm glad I tried it. I'm glad you did too. I was going to say, but what you're saying, I mean, this show is even more extreme than that because you cannot see them at all. It's like, you know what I mean? Not only is there no internet, it's like you are saying yes to a proposal no idea what they look like, no idea if they're your physical type. So that's what's kind of being tested on the show is like, can you find love and stay in love without being attracted to them as well? Some of these people, they do see each other and then physically they're like, oh yeah, I am attracted to them. But some of these people, they aren't. Yeah, that's true. And I don't know that that, I don't think any couple on the show has made it to the finish line when that's been an issue. So the lady, the, there's only been one couple so far that, ha- and this is, if, if you haven't seen this show, this is probably boring. I didn't think I was going to like this show. I won't watch uh, mm-hmm. Autistic Love. What's that one? Love on the Spectrum. Love on the Spectrum. I won't watch, is it Down with Love? With Down Syndrome? Down for Love, maybe? Down for Love, whatever yeah. it is, it's Down Syndrome. To me, it seems like, I, I love all of that. Yeah. I love people falling in love, but to me, that seems a little... A little like, hey, we're going to use this to get people in. I'm not a big Mm. fan of that. I won't watch Love Island because it's a bunch of, it's like uh, Jersey Shore with a British accent. Yeah, but it's just so trashy and fun. Hey, love, I I couldn't find love outside of a television program, so I've come here to see your titties. I mean, it's... (laughs) Yeah, you know what you're getting into with it, though. It's But this Love is Blind is really interesting to me because I've always thought The Voice is an Mm -hmm. incredible show. Yeah. I think that um, I think that looks are are so burned into our brains. Yeah. Um, that I love the idea that four people that are music moguls mm-hmm. sit in a chair 
and and can only hear your voice and can't see what you look like then they turn around and maybe you are not even close to what they were thinking maybe you're not the typical pop star but your voice fucking wails right i love that shit so last night there's one couple that got engaged yep and she came in she's she, i think she's attractive she's he, a knockout yeah he is like uh, i get it yeah i get how people would think he's attractive he's just you know if if i were a gay not my type I said last night, he's a very specific look. You know what I mean? I think you have to like really be into that. He looks for to me like a hockey player from Minnesota. That's what he looks like. He's got yeah. the... I think he looks like Gene Wilder. He's Well, he did have wild hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Gene Wild hair? Is that... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did we just crack the code? You son of a bitch. He comes Gene, back from the grave. Eugene. <laughs> um, but anyways, so this, and she comes out and he's falling over himself. Oh my God, you're yeah. so beautiful. I can't believe this. I love you so much. And she goes, uh, if we were in a bar, I would, I, or I, something like, I wouldn't have approached this guy in public because he's not my type. Yeah. I like, I think she let, said, I like ethnic men and he is... If there was a poster for white people, this kid would be on it. Don't you think? <laughs> I mean, it, like, yeah. so I just love this shit. And I love the fact that he, he gets to, because of his good attitude, mm -hmm. he gets a shot at this lady who he would never have a shot at otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, this is, this feels like, this feels like a therapy session for me. It's like, I just love when unattractive people get a chance to be with someone attractive. <laughs> Shut up. Hi. Thank you <laughs> for coming. That does not make sense for you. But, okay? I, but it's just it's interesting that I love it. Yeah. It's the great equalizer. Because like you said, this guy who's like crying in there, feeling like he's not an instant winner with all these women. And he is more conventionally attractive, but he says that he's a little bit insecure about his personality. So he's going in, doesn't get to use his looks, and is feeling like, well, fuck, like... I'm not like grabbing these women as fast as I usually would. And then other dudes who maybe like kind of get overlooked are having connections because they do have a good personality. And it's it's just so interesting. It is fun because because, you know, when you you have to learn how to talk to people. Yeah. If you can't walk in a room and everyone stops eating and stares at you, you have yeah. to know how to make them stop eating by having a conversation and everything. And I think yeah. this is. A fanta. I mean, it's still smut. It's smut, but it's it's, fun. it's a trashy show. It's fun, though. but the uh, the idea behind it is really interesting to me. Yeah, well, buckle up because the four weeks between this and when they get married, you are. I mean, it's a shocking roller coaster of like people that seem so rock solid, and then you're like, what in the f like? They meet each other's families. That's a huge oh, disaster wow. a lot of the time. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm so excited that you're we that I got you hooked. about to see the guy from the Lucky Charms box walk into a Puerto Rican household, <laughs> and I can't wait to see what happens. I'm jacked up. Well, I brought me Lucky Charms. Like we don't need Lucky Charms. We pray to G Jesus Cristo. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. I I'm so I'm excited that you're on board with me. Yeah, because no, uh, British uh, the Great British Baking Show. Mm -hmm. You got it right. All right. Uh, we've been watching that for a long time. We're in the middle of a season, mm -hmm. and we decided to try this Love is Blind, and now I don't think I want to watch that British baking show until we're done with Love is Blind. Yeah. I've watched every Love is Blind. I'm a diehard Love is Blind fan, but I just felt like I wasn't going to convince you. Yeah, this is my first it. season. Yeah. Well, I can't wait. I can't wait either. Yay! <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, plus veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly planning with meal prep even more delicious. What are you waiting for? Get started today and have a feel-good week of meals ready to go. You've got two-minute meals. Fuel up fast with Factors restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat up and eat whenever you are. There are snacks, smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day like breakfast, midday bites, 
and more. Sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale options done easily. They are flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing six to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. There's no prep, no mess meals. Uh, Factor meals are uh, Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. If you didn't know that, yes. Uh, and there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Yes, we've actually had Factor before, and we love it. Their smoothies are incredible. And, you know, Chad and I travel every week, and so it is so nice to have such delicious meals just, like, ready to go. Yeah, to throw a meal into a microwave that is, like, a salmon bowl, 35 grams of protein, right, all right. of these vegetables, some right to keep you going. It's it's really great. Yeah, I remember you and Olivia had, I believe it was the mac and cheese at mm-hmm. one point, yeah. and... Oh my lord, that smelled good. Yeah. So, guys, head to factormeals.com slash pretend prob five zero and use code pretend prob five zero to get fifty percent off. That's code pretend prob five zero at factormeals.com slash pretend prob five zero to get fifty percent off. Now back to the show. Okay, should we take some listener emails? Please. Okay. As always, you guys, if you want to write in and have us answer some of your questions. If you're seeking advice, um, you can write into pretendproblemspodcast at gmail.com and we'll take a crack at it and do our best. Right. So this first one is titled Social Media Issues. They say, hey, guys, love the podcast and have been fans of you guys for years. So happy for you, too. Thank you. Thank you. So my question is, if you have a decent social media presence and it's an issue for your partner, how do you handle that? I've been in multiple arguments with my girlfriend because her exes used socials to be shady, but I just use it for laughs. But she projects that onto me, even though I feel it's harmless. I am not talking to others or using it for any type of reason besides keeping up with old friends and talking shit. How do you guys handle it? Well, I don't think we handle it. Yeah. We don't, we don't do anything about it. Yeah. I, like, I don't, I don't feel that way. This is kind of an interesting dynamic you're talking about where you are pretty active on social media. It sounds like maybe you have some, you know, a following on there, but your girlfriend doesn't. And I think that can be a little tricky. Chad and I both have to use social media for our careers to try to like grow our following and stuff like that. Um, You know, we had a, you and I had a funny conversation one of that was a few weeks ago with the woman who came to the show who was like, and he responds to me on Instagram or whatever. And like the more detailed response was that you respond to her comments on Instagram, which is like completely fine. And what you and I both have to do for, well, we don't have to, but it's, it is like, you know, everybody says when you're on social media, like, yeah, interact with the people who follow you and stuff like that. But I think we also just like, like to respond to nice comments from people. Yeah. And again, this, this couple so supportive, so oh, great. Yeah. And uh, she was going through something, so I just sent her a little comment. Which I love about you. Sure. That's so nice. Yeah, I never never once. So, uh, you know, we, we saw a bunch of comments about that episode. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, man, he's backing down. He's in trouble. And yeah. it's like, the reason I'm calm is because I don't have anything to hide. There, You could have responded in any way, and people would have no, I know. found of course. something. But, but, but yeah. that, and that's what I want to say about this. Mm-hmm. I don't have anything to hide. Right. 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 Um, you know, I, I stopped lying a long time ago. I make sure that my, wh- what do you say? Yard is cleaned up. Uh, your side of the street is clean. My side of the street is clean. Mm-hmm. Um, I could have, I would have no problem with you looking at my phone, looking at my social media stuff at mm-hmm. all. I know that you won't because you trust me mm-hmm. and I think it's vice versa. Yeah. But I would say in this situation, because she's had exes be shady on social media, maybe you want to show that you're trustworthy and go here. But it, it can't be, it, it, it's tough because then, you know, she can go, well, you just deleted it. Yeah, it's kind of a Band-Aid, I think, to be like, here, you can look at it. Because I think if she if she has these trust issues, sometimes that's hard. It's like she might have to do some work on her own to get more secure 
in trusting you. Yeah, sorry to hear that somebody has trust issues. It sounds like a real <laughs> bummer. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't know anything about it. Uh-uh. <laughs> I don't know what anybody's talking about. I've had to tell the same three stories in therapy over and over and over and over, so it desensitizes the outcome. <laughs> Anyways, I guess what you should do is just, uh, you know, make sure that you're trustworthy and you're not acting shady and, and yeah. uh, ho- hopefully your actions will, will kind of show her that there's nothing to be worried about. Yeah. I think your advice is, is great about like, if you do feel comfortable being like, you can look at my phone, you know, but I just I also think there's like that fine line with that where you don't yeah. want to feel like you have a partner that's like constantly needing to go through your things because they don't trust you it's like yeah that's a slippery slope it's a slippery slope you don't you you just want to go go ahead and look and they go through it and then you go that's it yeah you're not in prison they're not gonna they don't have to come toss your cell every (laughs) every week you know to surprise you to try to find the contraband yeah chad and i both going into our relationship had trust issues and Mm -hmm. I feel like we both just show each other with our actions that we are trustworthy and we don't need to worry about that. But like, you know, whatever your partner's feeling, sometimes that's not going to get fixed overnight. So I'd also just try to be patient and, you know. And you got to understand it's not you, right? Right. It's coming from a bunch of shitty things that happened before. Yeah. But you're just going to take the brunt of it because you're next. Yeah. You're next in line and she's expecting you to fuck up like everybody else did. Yeah. All right. Um, our next one is titled Stepdad Questions. They say, hey, guys, big fans of you guys. And I love the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Have a question about stepping into a step parent role. About a year and a half ago, I got divorced after being with my partner for 17 years. We never had children. Then I met my current girlfriend and she has two teenage daughters. Since I've never dated anyone with kids, I'm looking for advice to just be a good sort of step parent. We've been dating for almost a year and I feel like I have a good relationship with her children. We've been talking about moving in together and I'm just looking for tips. Since they are teenagers, I have skipped some of the harder parenting phases. For now, I've just been making sure if there is an activity they're involved with, I clear my calendar to make sure I attend. That's really nice. I want them to know I'm someone they can rely on. Any help would be appreciated. Brian, they say, you can use my name. Brian, I think that's so nice that you clear your calendar and and go support in that way i know you're a big fan of that yeah brian doing all that stuff is is key Mm -hmm. letting them know you're going to be them be there for them every step of the way every time they need you is going to be great please get ready and maybe record this as a soundbite what i say to you you're not my real dad (laughs) get ready for that and get ready for it a lot in any situation (laughs) because i'm going to tell you something as any parent knows step parent parent grandparent anything you can do 10 things right in a row and you fuck up once yeah. and those 10 things go out the window. You cannot make these kids remember any of those 10 things. They will only remember when you didn't show up, when you said you were going to. Yeah. I mean, I think reliability is going to be huge. I'd also want to know um, like what the role their biological father has. Mm-hmm. Um, is he around? Any of that stuff? Is there shady shit with him where he doesn't show up? Yeah. Because it's not going to be fair, but... To fill that role, you have to show up. And when you say you're going to do something, for the love of God, Brian, do it. (laughs) Yeah. I will say from my end as somebody who has stepped into, I I wouldn't call it a step-parent role because your kids are older. Mm -hmm. They're now 20 and 24. Mm -hmm. and, um, And they're so close with you and their mom. Like They don't need any other parent in their life but I'm just you know I'm I'm your partner and now I'm around them Mm -hmm. quite a bit uh I have had a hard time not feeling like immediately adored (laughs) because (laughs) I think it's the comic in me where you you want to win the crowd over immediately and if even if everything's going great and there's one person with their arms crossed as a comic, you focus on the person with their arms crossed. And, um, you know, I've I've talked about it in therapy of, mm-hmm. of trying to figure out this role with your kids. And uh, my therapist said something interesting. She was like, do they need to like you? And I was like, well, 
I guess not. I was like, I'd like them to like me. She's like, yeah, but like, is that imperative? Like, do they have to like really, really love, like, do you guys have to be super close? And I was like, no, I guess not. And she's like, yeah. She's like, you guys might become close, but just know that like, you don't have to force anything. They probably won't like it if you try to force a connection, but just like be there and be cool and you know if it happens it happens and maybe it'll take time but yeah i th- it's a strange thing yeah and i know it's say with teenage girls there's going to be some times where you feel like you don't want to go back you don't want to talk to them cuz they are going to hurt your feelings you're going to get your dick knocked in the dirt with <laughs> yeah. this thing my advice is <laughs> hi uh <laughs> Keep Our showing cat up. Just went on Chad's lap. Keep showing up, but even when they're being assholes, keep coming back because that's going to prove to them, you know, that you are uh, reliable. Yeah, and, and even when they're being jerks, do it. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Well, I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> as Mia crawled on Chad's lap, we have an email titled "Pre-Pet Problems." <gasps> Sounds like a little. I love it. I love the play on pretend pre-pet problems. problems. Yeah, that pre-pet is great. Pro- problems. Get your asshole on my face, girl. <laughs> He's talking to the cat, not me. Just if you're not watching. On oh YouTube. yeah. <laughs> I forgot. Chad wishes I would put my asshole listen. in his face. Hey. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Like, okay. No, you're not. <laughs> This says, hi, Chad and Kelsey. My girlfriend and I have been together for about six years now, and we have two dogs and two cats. This week, a stray kitten with injuries showed up at our house, and my girlfriend was able to get it to come in. She had the vet fix him up, vaccinate him, and cut off his balls. Wow. Okay. (laughs) We're skipping the the neuter. I know who who this is. Oh, you do? Oh, funny. Okay. Uh, She claims that she is going to try to find a forever home, but I suspect she wants to keep him as a fifth pet. Part of what made me fall in love with her was her big heart and having a soft spot for animals in need. However, the last pet we had, a third dog that we adopted, had behavioral issues and we had to rehome her and we agreed to not mess with the dynamic of our current pets who all get along by introducing more animals. I can tell she is already in love with the new cat. Any suggestions for how to have a conversation about what to do next? You can use my name if you want. Smooches Jake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jake is very funny guy. Uh, but th- but this is a tr- this is a true story. I got a picture of this cat. Oh. Um, this cat uh, shit all over the bathroom floor and then slept in the litter box weirdly. Oh. Um, so a little peanut. You and I are going to have different thoughts about this. I I don't think so. No, I mean I just stray stray animals. No, I think you'll be surprised. What I'm going to say. I I think that um, that's a lot, right? I mean, yeah. we have a cat that's not a stray that is loved <laughs> unconditionally. Well, that is loved conditionally, and that condition is pissing, and so uh, it's it can be frustrating. And if mm-hmm. you're bringing in. If you're bringing in some uh, another pet that's going to, uh, what do you say, upset the dynamic, um, mm-hmm. then I, I don't know. You got four fucking animals that were wild animals at one point. Yeah. I'm on, I'm on the same page as you. Yeah. I just think, I, I know it is awesome to have a big heart, but a fifth cat then turns into a sixth cat and a sixth cat turns into a seventh dog and like all the, or whatever, you know, pet, yeah. whatever. So. Yeah. If you, so you're asking us suggestions for how to have a conversation. If you are trying to appeal to her big heart, from because I get into the situation where I'm like, oh, like, I want to rescue this pet and who could take better care of it than me? But the reality is, especially if you already have four pets, Mm -hmm. this cat would probably have a better quality of life in a house that either doesn't already have pets or just has like one other pet, but it's kind of like, you know, you have, if you bring on a fifth cat, fifth cat, you are officially outnumbered in terms of like the hands you have to pet creatures right now. You guys could each pet one of them. (laughs) Sorry, dude. God. Jesus. Well, Jake McDonald has a farm. What are you doing? You can't have five pet. You live in a, don't live on a farm. I know where you live. Oh my gosh. But I'm saying with four pets, can each be petting one of them with one hand and a fifth it's just i just would say if you are trying to like 
talk talk sense into her in terms of like what is really a good quality of life. It's like you might negatively impact your current pet's quality of life by messing up the dynamic and bringing a fifth one in. And that fifth one really might not have the best life it could in a situation like that. So that's how I would that's how I would talk to her about it is like you are doing the kind yeah. thing by finding a different home. Yeah. And if you if she does make this fifth one stay, keep showing up for it. <laughs> Okay. Even when it shits on the floor, keep showing up for it. <laughs> okay. This says, uh, add on to previous advice and a question. And they say, hello there, sitting across from me as always, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a huge middle of summer fan and just chat in general. Kelsey, you seem pretty cool so far. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> Rave review. <laughs> Kelsey, you seem pretty cool so far and great for our chatty daddy, so thanks. <laughs> Thank you. First off, I'd like to add on to some advice that you guys gave in one of the first episodes, which was no big conversations while either person is driving. Something along similar lines my ex-wife did that drove me crazy was texting big questions slash conversations as opposed to waiting until we were together. No matter how many times I asked her to wait until we were both home, a text would be sent that I would have to respond to that would then be misinterpreted and an argument would ensue. You can't convey tone or emotion via words on a screen, not easily at least. First of all, could not agree, agree more with that. We'll, yeah, that's, we'll, a, that's a good one. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, now onto my question. I'm recently divorced after being separated almost a year and have started dating again. Trying to navigate the dating world while being a single parent to a toddler can be tr quite tricky at times. I've met someone that also has kids, which is nice because she also understands the difficulties. My question, however, is in regard to our exes. Both of them are not great people who have made the divorce process super difficult for both of us um, and are constantly doing something to try and upset one of us. This means that, unfortunately, they tend to be brought up often whenever we are together. Is there a way to slowly steer away from conversations about our exes without just bluntly saying, let's not talk about our exes this time? Hers is more of a piece of work than mine somehow, and it's not that I don't care. It hurts to hear about some of the things he has done and continues to do, and I want to be able to support her however necessary. But I'd also like for us to continue to get to know each other more and not have either of the people who hurt us be brought up whenever we are together. And then they say, P.S. Love the show. It's such a different type of comedian podcast. I've been a fan of Chad for what feels like a decade at this point and actually got to finally see him when he was in Atlanta at the, end, at the end of the year. I even got to chat up Hay Bales for a bit waiting in line for the bathroom. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Justin, shout out to you. And then there's a nice picture of you guys. Oh, yeah. That's right. Very nice. So, okay. First of all, I couldn't agree more with the whole not texting big, like, argument inducing things we you and i have tried really hard to steer away from that yeah you can't text it it's, it's, it just doesn't work it's a, such a nightmare and chad and i have to like really try to stay like on top of that because we're apart so much that texting becomes a big part of our communication half the week when we're on tour and uh it's not easy no so we have to hold off on fighting Mm -hmm. while we're away mm -hmm. otherwise it gets it's too much yeah and then that stifles us a little bit when we get home because the first thing we say to each other is fuck you <laughs> yeah it's a great system we have That's not true. <laughs> um but uh yeah i agree you can't you can't be yeah. texting like that now can i go into the question yeah please i cannot fucking stand parents that make divorces harder than they need to be. I understand you've been hurt and all this shit, yeah. but there are children involved. Yeah. If there aren't kids, go for it. Yeah. Lock them in a fucking dungeon <laughs> and throw a little plate of a, with a sandwich on it over in the corner. I don't care about that. But when there's kids involved, God damn. Yeah. Just, you have to be an adult about it. Yeah. So you do something very interesting. You've started this thing where... When you don't want to work because you have a lot of shit going on, mm -hmm. you will set a timer for yourself and you will dive into work and and you can you can dive into work because you're not thinking about anything else because you've set a timer. You know in 25 minutes, I'm going to be able to think about these other things. But for 25, I'm going to focus all my power yeah. on this project. It's called the Pomodoro Technique. The Pomodoro Technique. So I would say... For this, if you could go, let's set a timer and we get to bag on our exes for a half hour. Mm. And then after that, it's about you and I. Love That's that. my advice. I don't know if it's going to work. 
It might be horrible, <laughs> but that's what I would try. I love that. You started doing something in our relationship a long time ago, and I've always really appreciated it. You will sometimes go, uh, hey, like permission to bring up an ex or like, hey, is it okay if I say something about an ex right now? Mm -hmm. And it's just nice because it like, A, I'm always going to say yes, that's fine. But you are like giving me a heads up and just kind of like checking in like, hey, is it okay if I bring something up right now? So it's less, you know. I, we just watched somebody in Love is Blind who they were having an interaction and this girl just came in and she's like, yeah, I had this other connection with this guy and it went like this and blah, blah, blah. And the guy was just like, whoa, like she, yeah. like right off the bat, she just was like immediately talking about another guy that she was involved with. And it was, you could tell that that probably would have gone way better if she had just said, is it okay with you if I bring this up? Sure. So... Uh, yeah, I like the setting a timer thing. And I also think maybe if you guys give that a try, I know for me, that's been helpful. And then I started doing it with you as well. And I think you've liked it too. And I think there might be times where you don't need a half hour and you don't have to set a timer. Maybe you guys should, and this is cheesy, but, um, in my family with my kids, we'd always do like coupons for birthdays, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like a ride to here, a ride to there, or, you know, I have two cards, one from each of my children that say unlimited hugs for life. Oh. And you know, those fuckers aren't following through on that. So, <laughs> uh, but I have the cards as proof, but maybe you want to do like just a quick pass where you go, Hey, I know we're not doing that thing right now, but something popped into my head. I'm not going to be able to quit thinking about it until yeah. I say it. So here's one of my tickets. Yeah. And he's a cocksucker or whatever it's going to be, yeah. you know? So, um, yeah, I think just figure out a way where, where it doesn't take up the whole night. Yeah. Yeah. And like, make sure you're talking to your friends about it too, or therapists, you know, uh, that's been something with me that I've tried to remember with us. Like once you are living with your significant other, it's easy to just kind of go to them for everything mm. And then be like, oh, well, I don't really need to like talk about this with my friends because like, I already talked it out with you. But I have been trying to make more of an effort to like find time to sure. still be catching up with my friends a lot so that you don't always take on the, the brunt of stuff. Well, that's nice of you. Yeah. But I think, yeah, just uh, good luck because I know it's not easy when, um, well, that's not fair. I don't know. I know from other people that it's not easy, easy when exes are, are being twats. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do one more. This is called Going on 10. My wife and I dated one month and she got pregnant. It's been almost nine. Yeah, dude. <laughs> nice one. Got some fast swimmers. A month. It's been almost nine years married and now going on 10 years dating. And I feel so fortunate to be so in love with and to be loved by her. We've been through everything from family death, milestones with our children, and my toxic mother-in-law. The biggest help for us was in a lot of ways charging forward and elevating my wife above everything. However, due to my toxic mother-in-law, I had sought therapy. My wife for the longest time would let her mother get involved with every aspect of our life to the point where I thought I was going to lose everything or she was going to, I don't know. Um, now she's not even in the rear view mirror because my wife only had her mom and took care of her. She feels so down at times because she'll never have that bond with her mother. If you have any advice, what can I do to help her through her own struggles dealing with the loss of a relationship with her mom? Side note, just wanted to say because of you, Chad, I was able to laugh again in my darkest moments. You and Kelsey are the sweetest and I look forward to your podcast every week. Oh, well, thanks. That's very I'm nice. I'm glad that worked out. Yeah, man. Um, her struggles dealing with the loss of a relationship with her mom. Can we start by saying how many people get pregnant a month into dating and it is a fucking nightmare yeah. and it doesn't work? Yeah. And now this could have been a way different question. It yeah. could have been like, I never get to see my kid because I got her pregnant a month into it. The fact that you're like, you are in so in love yeah. after 10 years, bravo. I'm so thrilled for you two. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, man, I feel like you and I, you know, talk about like my relationship with my mom mm -hmm. and, and her having dementia and how hard and heartbreaking all of that is. And you have talked to me about 
the relationship um, that you had with your dad and, and how complicated it was and, and all of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think something we've realized is that like neither of us are going to be the fix for a relationship with a parent. Like, right. But we just have to try to do our best to be there for each other. Mm-hmm. And so... I don't know that I understand the question. So his, so they no longer have a relationship. The his his wife and her mother, I believe. But yeah, her mother's alive. I think so. Okay. Yes. And so then, but they no longer have a relationship because she was up in everybody's business. I think so. It sounds like she was toxic. Yeah, toxic okay. mother in law. Um. Yeah. So I think just being there, you're not going to take the place of the relationship she had with her mom. But I think just getting to to be there when she needs to cry about it mm-hmm. and she needs to vent about it and you need to, um, I would just say like, you know, be patient with it because that's a, that's a huge loss. So yeah. you have to, I would say, be patient and uh, lots of hugs, yeah. lots of back rubbing. I would also ask her, ask your wife, what would help her the most, you know, like love language stuff is not just I think for like romantic dating sort of things I think it's also when you are in a time of need people need different things you know uh, we just talked about this on the podcast where I was like it helps me so much to vent to you and have you tell me like oh man like I can't even imagine that just makes me feel very seen and and helps things some people might like want you to go on a walk with them or just cuddle mm. them maybe they're not big on talking about it maybe they just want to be held or, or whatever uh maybe they want to go do an activity that will take their mind off it but just ask her i think that's a good place to start too yeah and you have a 10 year old and that's a lot so maybe um you and the 10 year old making uh meals mm. uh, something yeah. like that if this is if this and just giving your wife that time where you guys are making meals just to be by herself to read a book or anything like that, just to give her a little, a little alone time. Totally. Wow. Whole wide variety of emails. That was a lot. Yeah. They're good ones though. Yeah. Thank you guys as always for writing in. We still have so many yeah, that we yeah. haven't even gotten to because. Right. Yeah. You so guys many. write so many. As always, we wish uh, everyone the best of luck with yeah. what they're going through. Yeah. Okay, guys. We hope you're having a great week and uh, go see Chad in Texas. Do it. And we'll talk to you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.